This is a response video to Jacqueline Glenn. She posted a video yesterday where she talked a bit about evolution as well as uh, the Universe from Nothing, which is a book written by physicist Lawrence Cross, where he basically talks about the possibility that the universe may have come from nothing. In this video, I'm going to talk about evolution, and in particular, the genetic evidence for evolution, because I think it is the most compelling evidence that there is. Now, before I go on, I should point out that evolution is a scientific theory. Now, you may hear the term scientific theory and think to yourself, it's just a bullshit theory. There's no evidence behind it whatsoever. It's just a theory, you know, an idea. When actually the term theory means something very different to us than it would to a scientist. A scientific theory is defined as a well-substantiated explanation of some aspect of the natural world based on a body of knowledge that has been repeatedly confirmed through observation and experimentation. So in other words, a scientific theory is the highest form of scientific acknowledgement that an idea can strive to be. It is the closest thing to being a fact that it can possibly get to. A good example of this would be the theory of gravity. Now, the theory of gravity obviously is the closest thing to a fact that something can get to. We all know it exists. We have all fallen on our face at some point or another, and we discovered gravity because we know gravity is what pulled us down in the first place. So, gravity is a good example of a scientific theory. Now on to the fun part, evolution. First of all, where does evolution come from? How did this theory start? It all started with this guy, Charles Darwin. Charles Darwin was an English naturalist who sailed around the world on a ship called the Beagle, and he noticed that every continent he went to, animals seemed to be very different and very unique to that particular continent. He eventually wrote the book Origin of Species where he proposes the idea that all animals have evolved from earlier versions of themselves to fit their environment. Now I know there's a lot of people out there that don't understand what evolution is. There's a lot of people out there that think evolution says that human beings came from monkeys. No it doesn't. In fact, no biologist ever said that we came from monkeys. It's a common misconception but it's not accurate. Evolution doesn't state that at all. Evolution instead suggests that we, along with uh, gorillas and chimpanzees, all evolved from the same common ancestor. That's right. We homo sapiens, we are animals. In fact, the only difference between us and other animals is our awareness and our intelligence or our stupidity, however way you want to look at it. Now I'm going to show you some of the genetic evidence for evolution that has been discovered in recent years. Chromosomes. We all should have 24 pairs of chromosomes, so 48 chromosomes all together, and for each pair of chromosomes, you got one from mom and you got one from dad. The chimps and the gorillas, they too ha are supposed to have the exact same chromosomes that we do. They should have 48 in total in pairs of 24s. However, when we first started studying genetics, we ran into a bit of a problem. When biologists finally had the technology to study genetics, they discovered that we only had 23 pairs of chromosomes, so 46 chromosomes in total. Whereas the great apes, the gorillas and the chimps, they had 48 chromosomes in total and 24 pairs. So if they had 24 pairs and we only had 23 pairs, then evolution got it wrong. We did not evolve from the same common ancestor as the great apes. Check this out. These are basic, very basic diagrams of chromosomes. Notice the red markers on the end. Those are called telomeres. And then you see the blue markers in the center there. Those are called centromeres. So you have 24 pairs of these chromosomes with these structures in your genome. So where did our missing chromosomes go? Well, biologists had determined that if those chromosomes had in some way been deleted, then this would have been very lethal to us. It could have even led to our extinction. 
So biologists theorize what if the two chromosomes weren't necessarily deleted, but rather they had fused together with another pair of chromosomes in our genome. Well, they were right. Out of all 24 pairs of our chromosomes, it's chromosome pair number two. Chromosome pair number two has fused together with what is in chimps and gorillas, chromosome pair number 13. So you'll notice when you look at the diagram here, there are still two telomeres on the end. There's also two telomeres in the center where they don't belong. And then you'll notice chromosome number two, which is at the top, still has a uh, centromere there, the blue marker that's active. And the bottom one, you actually see the centromere here. However, I've seen diagrams where you actually don't see the blue centromere there because that blue centromere is actually inactive. But it is detectable, it's testable. Biologists have been able to detect that the centromere is in fact there in chromosome number 13, but it is inactive. I also want to talk about something called pseudogenes. It has a really weird spelling. Uh, uh, P-S-E-U-D-O-G-E-N-E. -E, pseudogene. Before I tell you uh, what they are, I have to... Um, uh, go over the basic structure of a chromosome. So basically, let's say this is a chromosome. I showed you the diagrams earlier. Um, genes are basically on top of each other. So you'll have one gene here, then one gene here, then one gene here, and so on. Now, all genes that we have in our chromosomes, they all basically uh, produce proteins, proteins which help the body function. Pseudogenes are genes that don't produce proteins anymore or they produce very little protein. However, even though they don't really contribute as much as other genes, they're still part of the genome and thus they continue to be passed down from generation to generation within any species. We have somewhere between 20 to 25,000 genes in our entire genome. They haven't been able to break it down to an exact number yet, but somewhere between 20 to 25,000 genes. And thousands of these genes in our genome are pseudogenes. They're inactive or they produce very little protein. If you were to compare the genome of two different species and you've noticed that uh, uh, the pseudogenes look like they're roughly in the same places, uh, uh, when you compare them to each other, then chances are those two species may have evolved from the same common ancestor. And when you compare the genome of a chimpanzee to that of a human, guess what they find? To say that the chimp's genome is similar to a human's genome is an understatement. They found the exact same pseudogenes in the exact same places in the genome. They're, they're not similar. They're literally exactly the same. And biologists know the only way the genome of two different species can be that closely identical is if somewhere down the line they evolved from the exact same common ancestor. Now before I end this video, I want to touch on something very, very quickly, and that is we evolved over millions of years, right? Well, during, that, during those millions of years, there have been a variety of changes, and because of this, there have actually been different species of human. So we're Homo sapiens, for example, right? Before us, there were Neanderthals, uh, Homo erectus, Homo habilis, Homo anticasser. So far, um, uh, Archaeologists have been able to identify 14, of course, with uh, Homo sapiens being us, the only ones that still exist. All the others went extinct. These are wax figures of Neanderthals. Uh, most archaeologists believe that they came into existence sometime between 400,000 to 600,000 years ago, and they went extinct roughly 30,000 years ago during the last ice age. They know this because the oldest skeleton or the youngest skeletons that they found, the most recent Neanderthal skeletons, uh, they were able to date back to about 30,000 years ago. And of course, they use a method called radiometric and carbon dating. This is the same kind of method used to determine the age of dinosaur bones.
The Homo erectus is another one. Homo erectus came into existence roughly between 1.8 million years ago and went extinct roughly 143 to 145,000 years ago. Homo erectus are very interesting because this could have been the birth of the created mind. I mean, us Homo sapiens, as we are today, we're very creative. Well, there have been artifacts that have actually been found uh, alongside with Homo erectus fossils. So it's possible that this was the time when the human species started to think and started to get creative and, and, and started to find different ways of interpreting the world. So the Homo erectus is very, very important to the history of human beings. And the last one I'll show you is the Australopithecus. The Australopithecus came into existence, most archaeologists think, around 6 million years ago and went extinct around 4.8 million years ago. These are the remains of a three-year-old, a three-year-old Australopithecus, um, who, and this is only uh, about 40% of her skeleton that was found scattered underneath all these rocks. By a, by a geologist named Donald Johnson. And he even, uh, he's been studying uh, these findings ever since the 1970s. I think he found them in 1974. And he wrote a book on these foundings called Lucy's Journey. He named this Australopithecus Lucy. And here is what Lucy may have looked like when she was alive. As you can see, she looks very much like a monkey. Um, however, uh, studying her skeleton, Donald Johnson can tell that she would have walked upright like a human. Her, the way her bones are structured and her legs, uh, they're very much human-like. She did not walk on uh, all fours. Now, Homo sapiens, modern humans, us, We've only been here for about the last 200,000 years, so we're still very young as a species if the first humanoid walked the earth uh, over 6 million years ago and the dinosaurs went extinct 65 million years ago. And astrophysicists and geologists determined that the earth is roughly a little more than 4.4, 4.5 billion years old. So we haven't been here for that long. So thanks for watching my video. I'm going to post a link to Jacqueline Glenn's video just below mine where she talks a little bit about evolution and she also talks about astrophysics and how uh, the universe could have come from nothing. I'm also going to post a link to a documentary below here called Becoming Human. I think Becoming Human is a BBC documentary, but I'm not sure, but it's on YouTube. All you got to do is YouTube Becoming Human, and it's about a two and a half hour documentary that talks about all the archaeological evidence that has been found to uh, prove the existence of all our ancestors, such as uh, the Homo habilis, the Homo erectus, etc. So check out that documentary. Again, thanks for watching. I'm going to be posting more science videos in the future. Also, don't forget to share this video, like it, subscribe, whatever, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.